Hey, Kelly, I have a favor to ask you. Could you please take care of the kids this weekend? I'm going on a trip with mom for three days. This weekend? I'm sorry, Emmy, but I can't do that. I have a lot of work to finish. You should have told me sooner. I'm really busy, and I don't have time to watch them. What do you mean you can't? Who else can I ask? Mom and I have been looking forward to this trip for a long time. What trip? You don't know? Mom didn't tell you? We're going to a spa resort for a girl's weekend. It has free massages and a jacuzzi in the room. It's going to be so relaxing and fun. No, she didn't mention anything to me. But I'm sorry, Emmy. I still can't watch your kids. I have a very important deadline for work. One of my biggest clients ordered a lot of products that they need by Monday. I have to prepare everything before then. I wish I could help you, but I can't. Come on, Kelly. Don't be like that. You work from home, right? You could just work while the kids are there. They won't bother you much. You have it easy compared to people who have to go to work every day. You can spare some time to watch my kids. Please, do it for mom. She deserves a break. She's done so much for us, especially for you. It's not that simple, Emmy. Working from home doesn't mean I don't have to work hard. I have a lot of responsibilities and tasks to do. And I do pay mom rent every month. I'm not living here for free. Yeah, sure you do. You don't know what it's like to be a real adult until you live in your own and take care of yourself. Maybe watching my kids will teach you something about responsibility and maturity. And what if something happens to them while you're not here? Who will take care of them then? Why did you wait until the last minute to ask me? I forgot, okay? Is that such a crime? You need to respect me and mom more. You're not in a position to say no to us. Understand? Don't make me tell the kids your aunt doesn't love them enough to watch them. That would break their hearts. Is that what you want? No, of course not. Fine, I'll do it. Thank you, Kelly. That's very kind of you. Why didn't you just agree from the start? You're the best, sis. Emmy, Mom just got into a car accident. She's in the hospital right now. What? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. She's going to be okay, but she's injured. She has a broken leg and some cuts and bruises. She has to stay in the hospital for a while. Oh my god! She was on her way back from a concert when another car hit her. A concert? What concert? I don't know. Some band she likes. She told me about it right before she left. And you didn't offer to drive her there and back? You know, she's been having trouble with her shoulders since our trip. How could you let her drive like that? This is your fault, Kelly. You should have been more considerate of mom. Hey, don't blame me for this. She didn't ask me to drive her, and I didn't know she was going to a concert until the last minute. I have a lot of work to do, and I can't just drop everything and go out. Work? What work? You mean your pathetic excuse for a job? You're always using that as an excuse to avoid doing anything for mom and me. You're so selfish and lazy. You don't care about anyone but yourself. You're living off mom's generosity and you don't even appreciate it. You should be doing everything you can do to help her out. She's done so much for you. More than you deserve. That's not true, Emmy. I do care about mom and you. I help out whenever I can. And I'm not living off mom. I pay her rent every month. And my job is not pathetic. It's challenging and rewarding. You don't understand what I do because you're too busy judging me. Don't talk back to me, Kelly. You need to respect me more. You're just jealous of me because I have a successful career and a happy family. You failed at everything you've ever tried. And you live at home with no prospects and you're probably going to die alone. Why don't you try to make something of yourself for once? Maybe then... Mom wouldn't worry about you so much. That's so mean, Emmy. How can you say such hurtful things to me? You're my sister. You're supposed to love me and support me. I'm not going to live with Mom forever. 
I've been saving up money to move out soon. Oh, really? How are you going to afford an apartment with your low-paying job? Do you think watching YouTube videos all day is going to pay your bills? You're so naive, Kelly. You have no idea how the real world works. Go ahead. Move out if you think you can handle it. But don't expect me to help you out with anything. You are on your own now. I can't wait to see how long it takes you before you come crawling back to mom, begging for money and a place to stay. You're so cruel, Emmy. Why are you doing this to me? Why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you, Kelly. I pity you. Kelly, are you blind? Look at these pajamas you brought me. They're hideous. Don't you have any fashion sense? They look like they belong to a toddler, not a grown woman. What's wrong with them? They're the ones you usually wear at home. I can't wear this at the hospital. They have little dots on them. People will think I'm lunatic if I wear this here. You can't even bring the right clothes for me. You're useless. Can't you bring me something more elegant and classy? Something that shows I have some dignity and taste. Fine, fine. Just tell me which ones you want. Ah. Uh. Emmy would know exactly what I want. She and I have such a good connection. She always brings me nice clothes and accessories when she visits me. She knows how to make me look good and feel comfortable. Why don't you ask her from now on then? She's busy taking care of her family and doing work around her house. You, on the other hand, just play on your computer all day long and talk to yourself. What are you talking about? Is that seriously what you think I do every day? Of course it is. You're probably playing video games and watching stupid videos on the internet. You have no ambition or direction in life. You're wasting your time and potential on meaningless things. That's not at all what I do. I'm working. Working? Ha! Huh. I've never heard of a job where you just type nonsense into a computer all day. What kind of job is that? Who pays you for that? And how do you expect me to make a living with that? Anyway, our next door neighbors said they're coming to visit me tomorrow. I want you to go to that bakery I always send you to and get some nice pastries or something. They're very sweet and thoughtful people. They always bring me flowers and cards when they come over. They deserve some appreciation from us. They're coming around noon, so make sure you bring it here before then. What? I have plans tomorrow. Excuse me? You're going to refuse your mother in the hospital? It's your fault I'm here in the first place. It's absolutely not my fault at all. It is. This wouldn't have happened if you offered to drive me and pick me up from the concert. You forced me to go by myself, even though my shoulder's been bothering me lately. If you had half a brain, you would have been able to guess I'd be tired after the concert. Any good daughter would never have let their mother drive in that condition. Amy and I all talked about what an irresponsible and inconsiderate person you are. She was so angry with you for not taking care of me. She said she would have done it if she was here. She's such a good daughter, unlike you. Why would you even go to the concert in the first place? If you were really in no shape to go on your own, why would you even risk it? You're the one that's irresponsible. Why do I feel like you purposely didn't ask me so you could use it as an excuse to belittle me? Why do I always get blamed for everything that goes wrong? How dare you? I'm generous enough to let you live in my house, and this is the way you talk to me? You should be waiting on me hand and food. You need to be grateful for everything I've done for you. I am. I'm literally doing everything that I can to help at home. Not to mention, I'm giving you more than enough money to live there for now. It's not like I'm living there for free. You probably hurt your shoulder on that stupid vacation with Emmy. 
It was really that bad that you should have gone to the doctor. But no, instead you went to a concert and told me right as you were about to walk out the door. I'm not a psychic. How was I supposed to know you were going? I would have been happy to drive you there and back if you asked me in advance. How dare you blame me for what happened? Oh, why are you getting so worked up? You finally realized you're the reason your poor old mother is being hospitalized? Imagine if I died in that accident. How would you feel? All I'm saying is that you should be more aware of your family and help out so things like this don't happen. You've got a real temper. You're scaring me. If you use that energy into finding a real job, maybe you'd be out of the house by now. You're unbelievable. The woman in the bed next to me is so lucky. She's got a nice daughter that stays with her all day. She does everything for her. She even hand feeds her. Why don't you come back here and take notes? And why don't you be more of a mother that I'd want to do that for? Excuse me? I'm done. I don't want anything to do with this family anymore. What am I to you? I've bitten my tongue and taken more abuse than I should have, but I'm done. I'm never doing anything for you or Emmy ever again. Does that mean you're leaving the house? Do you even have a place to go? Oh, stop lying to yourself. This is all a bluff, I can tell. You're not going anywhere. Kelly? You need to apologize to mom. You're acting like a child. Also, you need to text us both back. You can't just ignore us like this. It's not fair for me or mom. Absolutely not. I'd rather die than apologize. You and mom have treated me horribly for years. You've always looked down on me and made me feel worthless. I don't want anything to do with you or mom anymore. You don't have a choice. I have to do everything for mom since you started completely ignoring her. It's extremely rude and disrespectful. I have too much to worry about in my own life. This is your job, not mine. You're the one who agreed to take care of mom after dad died. You can't just abandon her like this. How busy could you possibly be? I was watching your children every day. What were you even doing? You don't have a job. Were you just passing them off to me so you didn't have to watch them? I'll say the same thing to you that I said to mom. I'm done doing anything for either of you. Figure it out yourselves. I'm a married woman with children. You're not that stupid that you've forgotten that, right? I don't have all the time in the world like you do. I have a lot of responsibilities and obligations that you wouldn't understand. I have to take care of my husband, my kids, my house, and my social life. I also have to balance everything and make sure everyone is happy and healthy. Mom is texting me literally all day. I don't have the time to read and respond to all of it. It's your responsibility to take care of that, not mine. Do your job. Oh, so now you know what I was going through. How could you still think that I just sit around all day and do nothing? I don't think I know it. Like I said, I have a hundred other things I need to do. I don't have the time or energy for this. That's where you come in. You have nothing else to do. So shouldn't this be fun for you? I'm so lucky that you are a failure. Otherwise, I'd have to be the one to take care of her. But luckily, I don't have to. Being mom's slave is your job, not mine. I, Emmy, sentence you to be mom's slave for life. It feels so good to be out. I couldn't take being in that house for another second. Huh? What are you talking about? When we were talking about me moving out, didn't you say, do it if you think you can? Well, I did. I'm out. I actually just pulled up to my new place. I don't believe you. You're lying. No, I'm not. Why don't you stop by mom's house if you don't believe me? All my stuff is gone. Where did you move to? Tell me. I am absolutely not telling you that. I mean, if you really wanted to find me, I don't think it would be that hard. It's the perfect place for me to work from home. Isn't technology great? I can work anywhere that has the internet. 
Why did you move out after all this time? What made you finally leave? Because I couldn't stand being walked all over by you and mom. No matter how much I did, it was never enough for either of you. I was fine with looking after her after you got married. I wanted you to enjoy your new life, so I took care of everything. It was tough once dad passed away, but I did my best to be there for mom and do everything while she was in mourning. Back then, she even thanked me for everything I did for her. In fact, it was the first and only time I've ever been appreciated for what I do. You're right. I do think it's stupid. You stopped talking and came back here. When I first agreed to look after mom, I never imagined it would come to this. Everything changed after dad died. I had to stand aside and watch. Our mom wasted all the money dad left her. What? I was stupid enough to give her money after she used it all up and said she didn't have enough money to support herself. I've been giving her $1,000 a month since then. That's on top of me putting in nearly $2,000 for the mortgage, groceries, and everything else we need for the house. Even then, Mom has the audacity to say I don't do enough for her. Hang on a second. Are you being real right now? Mom used all the money Dad left her? Has she really been living off the money you're giving her? I had no idea. I told her not to say anything. I didn't want you to worry about her. I wanted you to focus on your family and leave mom to me, like I said. She kept up the lie of me never doing anything for her pretty well. I'm not surprised you had no idea. She made me swear to never say anything to you. I agreed, and she thanked me by verbally abusing me and treating me like a slave. I don't believe it! She always told me you were after dad's inheritance! She said, that's why I used to live at home. Yeah, she's the ringleader in all of this. She's pretending to be the victim when she's really the one causing all the problems. But if she's the culprit, you're her accomplice. You force your kids onto me almost every day. I probably saw them more than you did. For what? Just so you and our evil mother can go off and relieve imaginary stress. Didn't you ever stop to think how mom could afford to go on vacation and constantly go to the salon? Ugh, I really am such an idiot. I should have done this months ago. Callie, I'm sorry. I had no idea things were like that. You may not believe me, but I did think it was a little weird mom could afford to do all those things with me. But I never could have imagined you were completely supporting her. I mean it. I'm so sorry for the way I treated you. You're a little too late to apologize. Ever since you were little, you were always mom's favorite. You always looked down on me, and I never understood why. So what exactly are you apologizing for? A lifetime of treating me like a subhuman, or for not realizing you were enabling mom to spend all of dad's and my money? I'll never forget or forgive you for the way you've treated me my whole life. You're no better than mom. I understand if you're upset. Why don't we sit down and talk about this face to face? We can talk about the way I treated you, and I'll apologize for all of it. Please, give me a chance. No way. I'd have to fly back from where I moved, and I don't want to do that. So just be sure to text me when mom finally dies. Before then, don't bother trying to talk to me. We can talk when we figure out what mom's leaving behind. If there's even anything at all. Hang on! Don't just run away from this! What? You're the one who ran away from all this. First, you left home and haven't lifted a finger to help me or mom since then. Was that your plan all along? To pretend like you wanted me to help? Just for a little bit, when really you are making me do everything? You really do take after mom. You take advantage of people and only care about yourself. I think you've had your fun. My shift is over. Kelly, did you get my package? I sent you all your favorite snacks. I thought you might be missing them since you moved so far away. I hope you're eating well and taking care of yourself. Don't send me anything else. I don't want any of it. That's a bit rude, don't you think? I can't believe you skipped town when I was in the hospital. Why did you move so far away? It's like you're in a whole different country. You know, 
it'd be hard for me to come and see you in my condition. You're breaking my heart, Kelly. Don't you miss me at all? That's exactly why I moved here. So you'd never try to come visit me? I figured you'd look into finding my address. Congratulations, you found me. You're a real Sherlock Holmes, aren't you? But don't get any ideas. I don't want to see you or hear from you ever again. You've made my life miserable for too long. I'm finally free from you and Emmy, and I'm not going back. Your sister is good with the internet, so I ask her to take care of it. I'm so glad we found you. I thought you'd be missing forever. That just goes to show how strong the bond of family is. We want you to come back to us. Yeah, something needs to change with privacy laws. If someone doesn't want to be found, it shouldn't be as easy as looking them up on the internet. You have no respect for my privacy or my choices. Oh, it's been so hard since you left. Now I know all the hard work you did for me, so I was hoping you'd come home already. Let's go back to living together. Emmy's there, isn't she? It's not the same. Oh, she's totally useless. She doesn't have any money to give me, and she didn't even visit while I was in the hospital. She gave some excuses, like she was too busy watching her kids or something. No matter how much I ask for help, she can't do anything. The only thing she did was find you. Don't you feel bad for me? There is not a single atom in my body that feels bad for you. It must be hard not having someone who you can treat like a slave anymore. It is! After all the money I used on vacations with her, this is how she repays me? I paid for everything on that last trip we went on. Not to mention, I hurt my shoulder carrying my suitcase on that vacation. It's her fault I got into that accident, don't you think so? First you blamed me, now you're blaming her. Look in the mirror, it's no one's fault but your own. And you say you paid for it all? But you were using the money I gave you. Stop acting like you're the victim. You should be ashamed of yourself. You don't have to be so harsh. I'm here in this big house all by myself. How am I supposed to leave here alone? How am I supposed to take care of this house, let alone pay for it? I don't care. Apply for social security if you need money. Why don't you go live with Emmy? Or even better, why don't you make a time machine and stop yourself from burning through all the money Dad left you? Emmy's always been your favorite, so you should be thrilled to live with her. She would do a fraction of the work I did for you, but at least you'll be with your favorite daughter. You really took me for granted. I know how much work you did. I've never been one to express my feelings. I get too embarrassed. But in my heart, I've always been grateful for all your help. Oh, yeah. That's great. I'm still never coming back. Don't even think about coming here. I'll chase you away with a baseball bat. Although, I don't think you'd last a second out here. You need the convenience of a city to survive. You're right. I do. That's why I think you should come back so we can live together again. If you don't, you're going to be all alone for the rest of your life. Are you okay with that? Oh... I feel so sorry for you. You shouldn't. I've never been happier to be living on my own. My life is better than it's ever been. If anything, you're the one who's going to be alone forever. Kelly, please. Why don't you, Emmy and I get together and work things out as a family? Emmy really thought a lot about the way she treated you. She's even on your side now. She said I was the reason you ran away. All we do is fight lately. Oh, life is so boring without you here. You mean life is so boring without the money I was giving you. Now that your punching bag is gone, it seems like you two are taking out your frustrations on each other. I'm never coming back. Not even for your funeral. Just give up. I never want to see your face ever again. Lose my number and don't send me anything else. I'm blocking your number. No, don't do that. 
I'm begging you. Just think about this before you make a big mistake. A mistake? No. This is the first time that I've ever done something right. Also, don't get things mixed up. You weren't the one letting me live in the house. I was the one who was doing you a favor by living there. But you were too busy spending my money and treating me like a servant to realize that. That's not my problem now. Who are you going to blame now that everyone's abandoned you? After I settled into my new place, I asked a relative to go and see what was going on at my mom's house. She told me that my mom was having a hard time living on her own. She begged and cried, and eventually my sister agreed to let her move in with her. But to no one's surprise, my mother started bossing everyone around and treating them like her servants. It caused so many problems that Emmy and her husband ended up getting divorced. I guess not having me to dump her kids on anymore really stressed her out. Now, she and her ex-husband are living separately. He's taking care of the kids while she and my mom are back at my mom's house. They're constantly fighting and yelling at each other. They can't stand each other, but they have nowhere else to go, so they're stuck together. I, on the other hand, have been the happiest I've ever been since I moved away from all that drama. It took me longer than it should have to realize how badly they were treating me and how much they were taking advantage of me. But I'm so glad I left when I did. I can focus on living my best life and saving up for my future. Now, the only person I have to worry about taking care of is myself.